can you keep an attitude of doing it all and doing it now? How can you make the choice of discipline over procrastination? How can you stay focused on your ambitions? How can you avoid conversations at the water cooler? You can keep your focus on your work. You can get it done today instead of tomorrow. You've got to really work on your consistent self-discipline on a daily basis. Or you'll find yourself distracted. Distracted by negative thoughts. Distracted by negative people. Distracted by water cooler chatter. And pretty soon, depending on the type of people you've associated with, distracted by your doubts within yourself. Never underestimate the power of influence and associations. And never underestimate the power of your own consistent self-discipline. As you know my story, I met someone when I was 25 years old. His name was Earl Schof, who dropped into my life at an extraordinary time. So key phrase, timing has a lot to do with it, and who knows part of the mystery of time, the timing. Part of the timing one I, was I just had that experience that I've shared in other seminars when the Girl Scout knocked on my door, and I walked to the door, and she gave me the big pitch on the Girl Scout cookies, best organization in the world for girls, got several flavors, time to buy the cookies, only $2.00. And with a big smile, she very politely asked me to buy. No problem, I wanted to buy. Big problem, I didn't have $2 in my pocket. And I didn't want to tell her that. So I did what I thought was next best. I lied to her. And I said, hey, look, I've already bought plenty of Girl Scout cookies. We've still got plenty in the house we haven't eaten yet. She said, oh, that's wonderful. Thank you very much. And she leaves. When she leaves, I say to myself, I don't want to live like this anymore. I mean, how low can you get lying to a Girl Scout? I mean, that's, <laughs> that's low down. I told myself that day, this will never happen to me again. One of those experiences. It's, it's called like life changing. I said, I'm going to search till I find better opportunities so my pocket won't be empty and the bank account won't be empty and I won't be so far behind on my promises to my family. And it was shortly after that, I meet Earl Schof, who taught me how to be wealthy, who taught me how to change my life. So who knows what the connection is, right? Someone says when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. You know, I don't know all the mystery of that. But anyway, it seems like. Some of those things uniquely happen. But it was Mr. Schof over a five-year period before he died at age 49 who taught me some extraordinarily simple things. He only went to the ninth grade in school, never finished high school, never went to college, never went to university. So he put his ideas and his experiences in very simple language, which I think for me, you know, a kid from the farms of Idaho, uh, that simplicity was so important. Because if it would have been technical, I'd have missed it. If it would have been mystic, I, you know, I would have you know, backed away. But it was just basic, blunt, ABC, familiar stuff that I hadn't thought of before. And he did start to remind me, and those ideas changed my life. Mr. Schof was the one when I said, you know, this is all they pay. He said, you've been working six years, Mr. Owen. How come you're not doing better? And I said, this is all the company pays. He says, well, that's not true. I said, no, this is my paycheck. This is all the company pays. He said, no, this is all the company pays you, I thought. <laughs> That's a new way to look at it, right? He said, doesn't the company pay two, three, four, five times this amount to other people? And I said, well, yes. He said, well, then this is not all the company pays. It's all they pay you. And if you qualified, wouldn't your income grow two, three, four, five times? I said, I suppose. So he said, we don't have to work on the company. We have to work on you. See, that was the beginning of what he called the phrase personal development. I told him things cost too much. He said, no, you can't afford them. I thought, well, that's a new concept. I, I hadn't thought about that. You know, we put some of the valuable things on the high shelf, so you can't get to them until you qualify. If you want the things on the higher shelf, you've got to stand on the books you read. Every book you read, you get to stand a little higher so you can get the things on the higher shelf. 
See, I learned those concepts. It was so incredible. And here was the most important one. Success is something you attract by the person you become. See, that phrase changed my life. Success is something you attract by the person you become. Success is not something you pursue. It's like chasing a butterfly. You can't quite catch it. Success is something you attract by becoming an attractive person. See, those were new concepts to me. I'm just working hard trying to make a living. Here's what he said to me. This changed my life. I got a chance to teach this in Moscow and across Russia. Three visits, now the fourth. Here's what Shof taught me. Profits are better than wages. Nobody taught me that in high school. Nobody taught me that. I went to one year of college. Nobody taught me. Profits are better than wages. Wages make you a living. Profits make you a fortune. And how could you work on both a living and a fortune? He said, well, you could start part-time working on your fortune while you're working full-time on your living. I thought, wow. Now, he said, it's fun to get up in the morning. Not just getting up, go to work to pay the rent, but to get up to go to work to make a fortune. First, to make a living for my family. Second, to make a fortune. And he taught me how to make both a living and a fortune. Guess what I did? I learned how to make both a living and a fortune. And I found out anybody could do it once they get the information. And at age 25, I started receiving this extraordinary information. Here's what he said. Your income is directly related to your philosophy, not to the economy. I thought no one ever told me that. I kept hoping the economy would change. He said, no, your philosophy has to change. I assured him that I had my fingers crossed. He said, that won't help. Then what could I do to change my income and multiply it by 2, by 3, by 5, by 10, and then multiply it by 10 again? What could I do? And he started giving me the disciplines and the process of learning the skills to change my life. This was an extraordinary man. Those were extraordinary times for me. Life-changing in every manner that you can imagine. But very simple ABC concept. Here's what I learned. Not to search for the exotic until you've discovered the basic. And those basic philosophies that he shared with me during that time were life-changing. And he called it personal development.